This video was brought to you by the wonderful people on screen here who support me over at Patreon. If you want to support this channel and what I do, then please check the link in the description or the link at the end of the video. Alright, well, since it's Pride Month, let's go ahead and go over- The truth is that right now in America, various groups are not allowed to express pride in the various identities they have. Oh. I guess we're gonna be going down the straight pride rabbit hole. Alright, so I do recognize that there's a little bit of strangeness with a, you know, cis, straight guy talking about pride in front of a group of people right now during Pride Month. So I decided I would go ahead and bring my friend Bionic Dance on because she has a few different opinions on this guy and his video. Well, you do need a lesbian's perspective sometime, don't ya? Oh, well, if we're talking about perspective, then there is one aspect of my channel that I usually give my perspective on, but you might want to this time instead. I do have my fan art section, and sometimes it can get pretty weird. Do you want to give your perspective on that? I think it'll be entertaining. So what do you got for me? So here we have what looks like Dr. Robotnik, I guess, or perhaps just a generic French villain, but Surus style from Kitty. And this appears to be yet another, what is it, Rule 63 where they gender swap you? From Oddity 98. And is that a gravestone you're next to? Who did you kill, Surus? And oh my gosh, what is this Lovecraftian nightmare from P.S. Toxic? I hope that's how you pronounce it. Oh my gosh, what has happened to your face? Well, with the fan art out of the way, I guess that means we can go ahead and get into the video, as cringy as it might end up being. Last month, all across the world, parades and festivities were held in honor of LGBT Pride Month. Pride Month is designed to give LGBT people a month for them where they can celebrate their sexuality. Before we really get started, I have to clarify. The title of this video has pride in quotation marks because I'm referring to this phenomenon where certain groups get months, days, or other special privileges assigned to them. The pride in the title isn't referring to the literal concept of being proud of who you are. Ultimately, I think everyone should be proud to a degree. It's completely okay to be proud of your heritage, your sexuality, your accomplishments, and everything that makes you who you are. What I just said, that it's okay to be proud of your heritage, etc., that doesn't sound that controversial, does it? No, it doesn't actually sound terribly controversial in its own. It's the fact that you might have some other things that come via the entailment factor. Yeah, you know, he just said that that kind of pride isn't what Pride Month is about, and yet somehow he seems to think it's relevant to bring it up. It sounds like something you would see in a public school on a poster, or something a corporate HR office would release in a diversity statement. But the truth is that right now in America, various groups are not allowed to express pride in the various identities they have. It's not that you're not allowed to express pride, it's just that doing so misses the entire point of Pride Months and Pride celebrations. Let's look at Black Pride, for example. Go ahead and type Black Pride into Google. This is probably what you'll come up with. Quote, Black Pride is a movement in response to the dominant white cultures and ideologies that encourages black people to celebrate black culture and embrace their African heritage. In the US, it was a direct response to white racism, especially during the Civil Rights Movement. Black people in America are encouraged to get in touch with their African heritage. February is designated as Black History Month, and that's seen as a good, positive thing. Yes, and the reason why we have that in the first place, like you said, was as a direct reaction to racism that people had to actually deal with. I could go ahead and say that more broadly, it was a response to discrimination and prejudice. The reason people say they have pride is because they were told they had to be ashamed. That's why they stand up and say, I'm proud of who I am, and you don't get to tell me it's not okay. White people kind of don't need to do that. What about Hispanic pride? Every September and October, we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. We have the Hispanic Heritage Foundation. Organizations like Mecha, which call for Hispanic separatism, and actually call for the Hispanic recolonization of the southwestern United States, these organizations are present on hundreds of college campuses across the U.S. Yes, but that concept is also entirely different. The idea of separating yourself into an ethnostate is not the same thing as being proud of your heritage. It's not the same thing as being proud in response to being told that you should be ashamed. To try to group these things together is to basically say that all pride in one's African-American heritage is in fact an argument for an ethnostate. 
but that's not what it is. And I don't think anybody would agree that that's what it is, but that seems to be what you're trying to shape it into with this comparison. It is almost like it's a semantic argument. I mean, I admit Pride Month does kind of have a branding problem the same way that climate change used to be global warming until people use that exact phrasing to make it into something it wasn't. And they're celebrated by faculty. So Hispanic Pride is completely fine. It's celebrated. And again, that's an okay thing. Except again, what you described was not Hispanic pride. When you describe an attempt to segregate yourself as an ethnic state and try to cut out a portion of land for yourself, you are describing, again, the concept of an ethnostate, something that I don't agree with, and most people who have Hispanic pride would not agree with. This is not the same thing. Hispanic pride is not advocacy for ethnostates, and I feel like this might end up being a running theme in your video, but I really hope it won't. But what about European Americans, people of European descent? The vast majority of the people that sailed across the seas and colonized a hostile land and comprised 90% of America's population until approximately the 1960s. The truth is that Europeans throughout history have accomplished some pretty great things. All you need to do is look at the architecture, civilizations, and empires built back in Europe to see proof of that. Yet, and remember how we just typed Black Pride into Google and got a positive result? Type the phrase White Pride into Google and see what you come up with. Here's what I got. Quote, White Pride is a motto primarily used by white separatist, white nationalist, neo-Nazi, and white supremacist organizations in order to signal racist or racialist viewpoints. Well, of course, because it's in reaction to other people saying they have pride in their ethnicity, and it's just a bunch of people who say, well, why not me too? Basically, what you have to do with any of this is you have to look at the series of events that lead to somebody saying they have white pride. Nine times out of ten, they're not saying they have white pride because they were told they can't have any pride in their heritage. Nine times out of ten, they see other people having pride in their heritage and say that, oh, I would like that as well, except that historically we find that at least here in America, and this is the very important part here, here in America, we find that your argument of Europeans coming to take over a hostile land, I I'm sorry, but historically we were the hostile people who came in and took over presently living Native Americans. So your reframing of this is almost like revisionist history. And again, this is kind of a branding problem because there is no short and punchy way to say that I have pride in who I am despite other people telling me I shouldn't and that I should be marginalized, a second class citizen at best, that just doesn't fit on a bumper sticker. So wait, black and Hispanic pride make you noble and good and proud, but white pride makes you a neo-Nazi? Classically, not necessarily but at the same time, the entailment usually is there. So again, I don't know how many times I have to say it, but black pride historically was in response to white people telling them that they could not have their own culture, that they should be ashamed of their own culture. Same thing with Hispanic pride, same thing with Native American pride. Pretty much any of these groups historically in America were oppressed by white people. So what you get when somebody says white pride you have to figure out why they're being proud of being white specifically. Because the history of white people in America is a bit of a history of oppression. It's true, the motivation behind having a Pride Month, celebrating who and what you are, matters. If every person were really allowed to express pride in who they are, this double standard would not exist. You would be allowed to express your pride in your Asian or African or Hispanic or yes, European heritage, without risk being called a neo-Nazi. It's not that you can't express pride in who you are, but the fact is that you are co-opting what are essentially rights movements when you already have most of the rights that these people are fighting to get. So it doesn't actually work to say, oh, I have white pride and have it be seen as just a celebration. It really does get tied with bigotry because the other pride is in response to bigotry. This is why I can't stand this pride phenomenon, because only certain groups are really allowed to have pride, and whether or not you're allowed to have pride is determined by your place on the victimhood hierarchy. 
I thought that it was clear that what Pride Month was wasn't literal pride, and now he seems to be conflating the two, in fact, swapping back and forth between which one he means to suit his own purposes. A white man will never be allowed to express pride in his European heritage, but a gay white man will be allowed to express pride in his LGBT-ness. Yes, because there's nothing about being white that inherently makes you an oppressed person. Yet, if you're a gay person in America, the chances of you having to deal with some level of oppression are marginally higher. Likewise, a straight Asian man will never be allowed to express pride in the fact that he plans on getting married and having a family and literally continuing the human species. Except he will be able to express all of that. In fact, there's an entire multi-thousand dollar ceremony he'll be able to hold in celebration of that very fact. And he won't have to be worried about where he gets the cake. By the way, getting married and having a family is absolutely something you should be allowed to be proud about. But this straight Asian man will be allowed to express pride in the fact that he's of Asian descent, not in the fact that he's putting his career and finances on hold to have a family. So I would like to know, where are these imaginary people who are telling you that you can't be proud of existing? Because what you're explaining right now is essentially somebody going through the steps of existing, going through getting a family set up and having a job. And all of these things are things that just come with existence. And you can be quite happy and proud of those things. It's how and why you express those that matter. This is the same thing that Bionic Dance talked about when she mentioned the intent behind the thing that you're proud about and why you are proud about it. So could you please show me these imaginary people that are saying that you can't be proud of these things? Because you most certainly can. It's just a matter of why are you doing it? You definitely don't need a parade to say, look at me, I had some crotch spawn. Look, I have nothing against gay people or anything like that. But I think we as a society really need to evaluate this pride movement. It's totally fine. and In fact, it's good to be proud of who you are. And if you value your sexuality as essential to your identity, of course you should be proud of it. We should also be okay with family pride, traditional values pride, heterosexual pride. Traditional values pride. Uh, okay. Do you need to have pride in that? Because I'm thinking not. To me, that basically sounds like having pride in the status quo. Well, and it also does sort of sound like having pride in looking down on others. Because usually when someone says traditional values, well, they're looking at folks like, say, me, a rabid and screaming left-wing atheist, lesbian atheist at that, who's just not like him in his button-down world. The family is the bedrock of Western civilization. And there it is. No, the family is the bedrock of practically every civilization in that civilization requires some type of procreation in order to exist. And usually when somebody mentions the word family, especially when talking about traditional family values, we're talking about a husband and wife coming together to breed. This is a foundation of all civilizations in that without people, these civilizations don't exist. However, by calling that the bedrock of your civilization, you're just saying that your civilization exists because breeding. And that's not terribly special, nor is that something I would be horribly proud of. If we pointed out two mommies or two daddies with a big old brood of kids and said, hey, look, a family, I, I bet he'd say, no, no, that doesn't count. And instead of taking that for granted, we should celebrate it. Some people will argue that neither heterosexuals nor European Americans should be expressing pride in those things because straight people and white people are not oppressed classes. I would counter that with a question. How many corporate and government entities express their admiration and joy and celebration for Pride Month? Quite a few. Google, Apple, Facebook, Nike, and hundreds of other companies express their support publicly for Pride Month. City governments, politicians, even police departments were all getting in on this act. How can we seriously claim there's some sort of rampant anti-LGBT bias in society when all of the power brokers of society are coalescing in support of Pride Month? That's just showing the cultural change. Because 10, 20 years ago, none of those companies would have dared show their support for Pride. This is progress. Moreover, you are aware that all of their stuff that is in support of every other type of person that you would consider normal, I guess is the working term you would use, is functionally what those corporations do the other 11 months of the year. And being willing to say, hey, we're going to hire you guys and we're glad to do it and you'll get the same wages and the same treatment. 
that that's showing support. That's the best kind of showing support. Like I said, it's progress. Not to mention, this is the standard idea of egalitarianism. Egalitarianism exists so that a oppressed class can be raised up to the point where they are equal with every other class in society, as opposed to saying, oh, well, there's no legal restrictions on you, so I guess we're just going to pretend that everything's fine with you. Even if we give a gay person every single legal right, that a heterosexual person has, it does not mean that society at large is still moving at the same pace as that legal law. That's definitely something I've seen people not noticing, not willing to acknowledge some of them, is that social change and legal change, not quite the same thing. And when we talk about European heritage, some people will say that because Europe is made up of so many different countries and cultures, it's impossible to accurately celebrate European heritage. This argument is extremely easy to refute. Is there only one culture or country in Africa? Is there only one Hispanic country or culture? Well, considering that we don't actually celebrate African heritage when we are celebrating Black History Month in America, usually we are celebrating history of Black Americans, then your argument seems to not be on very good foundations because we don't point to Africa. Given that that is the case, Let's see what we can do when we're talking about primarily white people. And bear in mind, this is coming from a white person. When we look at the history of white people in America, we see a history of people who have their status quo, and anything that seems to violate that status quo in any way has to be completely destroyed in one way or another, either through a series of witch trials, or through Jim Crow laws, or through any number of things that we have done through legislation to hurt any group that is not the standard white nuclear family. Sounds like saying we can't celebrate gay pride because we have gay boys and bull dykes and bears and fem dykes and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. There's no one single way to be homosexual, so hey, we can't celebrate it. It doesn't work like that. No, of course not. Within broader groups, of course there are differences between histories and cultures. But the differences between people from Sudan and the Congo, for example, that doesn't stop us from celebrating Black History Month. And again... Black History Month is a celebration of American history as it is put through the framework of African Americans and their perspective, which means when you're talking about particular countries that exist on another continent, that doesn't factor in in the same way, because we stripped those people of that culture. We took that away. I feel kind of weird because I am so multiracial, it's not even funny. If everyone had sex with everyone else till we were all the same culture, y'all would look like me. Sorry. So I can't say we on either one, or I can say we on all of them. It's very strange. Again, I'll reiterate. I think the idea of having pride in yourself is a great and probably psychologically healthy thing. I'm ecstatic that LGBT Americans can celebrate their sexuality. Gee, D do you suppose he has one or two gay friends and that qualifies him to say he's glad? I'm excited that black Americans can celebrate black history. But if you're straight and you plan on having children, you should absolutely be allowed to have pride in that too. Humanity literally ends if we don't have children. And again, nobody is saying that you can't be proud of simply existing. It's the intent behind it and the way you express it that changes the argument. So for instance, if somebody says, I'm proud to be heterosexual. Okay, cool. That's fine. But if somebody then tries to take that and make a straight pride parade in Boston with Milo Indianopoulos as the marshal, then we start to see what the actual motivations are. And they're not quite as innocent as you want to portray them here in this video. And at the same time, I think European Americans should be able to be proud of our histories too. There's nothing wrong with being proud of who you are. Europeans have built without question some of the most impressive empires in world history. Europeans have been innovators, conquerors, inventors, and kings. And if you want to celebrate that, no one should be able to stop you. For years, Europeans and European Americans have been apologizing, groveling, and feeling guilt over supposed historical sins of our race. And there we are, the supposed historical sins. You can say supposed, but I can look at the last 250 years of American history and we don't find supposed as the working word there. And this is just another example of someone else wishing they could be the victim. We've been so convinced by the 
Marxist school system and Hollywood propaganda that- Oh, so all of this just lies on the bedrock of conspiracy theory. Okay, can you please find me somewhere in the school system, primarily in grades 1 through 12, where we find Marxist leanings? Please. I'll wait. Considering that our school system works under a very capitalist and industrial framework, if you can find the Marxist undertones, I'll be here. Being white is something to be ashamed about, but not anymore. Nobody ever said you have to be ashamed of being white. It's just that celebrating it is kind of dickish considering what the other pride movements are actually all about. The time for shame and the time for guilt is over. We've been convinced by the Marxist school system and Hollywood propaganda that being of European heritage is something to be ashamed of. There's one thing that you did here. It's one of two things. Either A, you didn't realize that you said the same thing twice and you didn't cut it out during editing, or B, you tried to say the same thing but not in so many words to reinforce your point and then accidentally used almost all the exact same words. But not anymore. The time for shame and guilt is over. Nope. Actually, he just tried to say the same thing twice and didn't realize he was using all the same damn words. Editing mistake happens to all of us. I've had a few really embarrassing ones. It's time for everyone to have equal access to pride. It's time to not be afraid of being proud of yourself and your heritage. And it's time to start thinking about creating a legacy that you can be proud of. Oh, he doesn't have a legacy to stand on. <laughs> so the biggest problem that I have with this video and others like it is again, not understanding the framework of why we have Pride Month. We have Pride Month because there are still children who, when they come out to their parents as trans or as gay or as lesbian or as any type of gender sexual minority, they end up finding that they get ostracized by their family. This is a thing that happens every single day in America still, usually because there's some pretty rabid evangelicals that think that this is the right thing to do, that the loving thing to do is to not accept their children when they come out to them. Because these people still exist, and because this is a thing that still happens today in America, this is the reason why we still have pride. I'm sure that the reason might differ country to country, but I'm most familiar with our history. And our history is one of not letting these people merely exist up until very recently. I have no intention of having kids. Taking care of my cat is enough responsibility, but the only thing they would ever have to be ashamed of if they came out to me is being kind of like this guy. Are you sure that they wouldn't have to be more ashamed of being more of a Star Trek fan than a Star Wars one? Ooh, that's a toughie. That's a toughie. Just so long as they're fans of the Orville. Well, with that all said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you are watching this on my channel, please go subscribe to Bionic Dance because she's been helping out my channel for a long time and she's been involved in various projects. And if you haven't subscribed to her channel, I have to wonder what you're doing. And if you're not subscribed to Cyrus's channel, well, that's something you really ought to correct because he's awesome. I disagree. I'm going to go ahead and roll the credits before you get a chance to say anything about it. Oh, no fair.